Hey, welcome to Grace Note Recordings, where we provide cost-saving DIY solutions for your home studio. A lot's happened since the last time we saw each other, including one of these. There's a lot I want to catch you up on, but in this video, I want to discuss an inexpensive way to get a variety of tube amp sounds in your studio, which is going to involve building them, or rather converting them from vintage tube equipment such as radios, organ amplifiers, even reel-to-reel -reel tape decks. I know this sounds like a ton of work, and it is, but it's also a really rewarding way to save money and get that classic vintage tube amp sound in your studio that may otherwise be out of reach. I did my first tube amp conversion about a year ago, and you can check that out by following the links down in the description below. I'm far from an expert at building amps and still very much in the learning phase. This video series is intended to simply document my journey and to be a place for inspiration among the amp building community. I'm going to be using the word platform throughout this video to refer to the equipment that you'll be starting with to build your amp. For example, this radio is the platform I'll be using for a future build. As I mentioned earlier, the platform could be any tube gear that you find. A quick note about cost savings. Generally, anytime you build something, you're going to save money, and this is no different. Even scratch building an amp can save you more money than even buying them used. But I believe doing a conversion or working from a platform can save you even more. I'm going to break these conversions down into three levels. So let's start with level one, which is simply going to use the body and chassis from the platform. The idea here is to build a pre-designed circuit such as the 5F1 Fender Champ circuit and simply build it into the chassis and body of the platform. This is comparable to a hot rod build, or perhaps a four-wheeler build. Essentially, taking a stock vehicle, gutting it, and rebuilding it only using the original body and chassis. Everything else, including the engine, suspension, drive chain, and tires, are all aftermarket in order to maximize the performance, which I guess performance in this metaphor equates to the sound desirableness of the amp, which I think that's where this analogy really breaks down, because performance of an amp is completely subjective. Of note, just how a hot rod may need to be tubbed out to fit bigger tires or the hood cut to fit a supercharger, you may need to modify the body on your platform in order to fit the input jack or maybe another potentiometer for a tone knob. The biggest benefit of this conversion is it doesn't generally require too much critical thinking, just some planning for component placement. In terms of cost savings, I found it fairly easy to find a platform that's cheaper than what it would cost either to buy or build the body and chassis yourself. While a level 1 conversion is still cheaper than buying a tube amp, even used, it's not the cheapest method I'm showing you in this video, but there are other benefits. All you're really looking for in a platform for a level 1 conversion is something that you think looks cool and can fit all the necessary components. I really like these cathedral or tombstone radios because you can fit an 8 inch speaker in there, but if you're just building an amp head, then the options are virtually unlimited. I plan to use this tombstone radio for a Fender Champ build, which is next in my queue, so stay tuned for that. A quick caution of what to look out for. I don't recommend getting any platform that's already been restored. Just as you wouldn't buy a car that's already had meticulous and costly restoration just to be gutted again for no good reason, I would save those for someone interested in the original platform itself. A level 2 conversion uses the body, chassis, and one or more of the original transformers and tubes from the platform. So, stick into our car analogy, these builds don't have any drastic modifications. Maybe just a lift, a cool paint job, but most of the major components of these vehicles are original. These can either be built to a pre-designed circuit or a circuit you designed yourself. Either way, expect there to be some circuit design and modification required to make it work. Now, I know you're interested in saving the most money. I am too, especially with the new baby. The cost savings is going to be directly correlated to how many components from the platform are used in the amp. The first and most important thing to consider is the suitability of the platform for the intended tube. In my opinion, the most important spec in determining the suitability is the B-plus voltage that it can which can help determine the tube amp circuits it can best support. For example, if the platform only provides 185 volts at B+, and I'm trying to convert it to an amp that requires 250 volts, then I wouldn't consider these suitable for each other because it would require a different transformer and thus reduce the cost savings. 
difference. There are some ways to easily fix this. For example, if the voltage difference were closer, you might be able to put a solid state rectifier and get away with it, but that may also change the sound in an undesirable way. Regardless, in my limited experience, I found that the most suitable situations are when the voltages between the platform and the desired tube amp are closely related. The easiest way to check the suitability is to download the schematic. There's a good chance that the voltages are listed on the line diagram. If a schematic isn't available, then check the power and rectifier tubes. From there, you can get a good idea of its suitability. Based on the amps I like best, I generally look for a platform with a 6V6 or anything in that family, could be a 6K6 or 6F6 or even a 6BQ5, and in the rectifier, a 5Y3 or even a 6X4. The tubes don't need to be an exact match, we're just determining if the voltage will be suitable for the amp. A quick note about preamp tubes. Although the preamp tubes have the biggest impact on the guitar sound, I found them to be a near irrelevant consideration for a level two conversion. Because so long as the power transformer can supply enough voltage for the power tube, then the circuit can be changed relatively easily to accommodate most common preamp tubes. If someone with more experience has a different opinion or perspective, I'd like to hear your thoughts down below. As you may be thinking by now, should I look for a particular platform with a certain tube complement to build the amp that I want, or should I just look for the platforms that are available and let that guide the end result? And my answer is, well, yes. If you're set on building a particular amp, then just be patient in finding the right platform. Right now, I'm happy just finding what's available at a reasonable price and letting that guide the amp I'm going to build. For example, this radio has a 6X4 and tube complement suitable for maybe a Gibson Skylark or even a Silvertone 1481, I think it is. Neither are amps I would have sought out myself, but it will make for a fun, unique, and inexpensive project that will add that sound to my studio. For those curious, I picked this up on eBay for about 20 bucks. A couple things to look out for include anything with either 1, 35, or 50 series tubes. Smaller tube radios were often designed with 1 series tubes and generally don't provide any valuable components in building guitar amps. Along the same line, I would stay away from equipment designed with 35 or 50 series tubes because in the vast majority of the time, these don't use any transformers. So not only are they more dangerous to work on and operate, but they're generally unsuitable for guitar amps. Again, it is possible, I just recommend staying away. If you have successfully used a platform with these tubes, let me know down in the comments. I'd be interested in knowing how it came out. Lastly, a level three conversion uses only the original components found in the platform. This requires the most extensive circuit design. However, it's the lowest cost because you're not having to buy any major components. This is similar to restoring a car and keeping it as close to original as possible. Although I may not have it here because to my surprise, those die cast models were a ridiculous price, but a classic Chevy Bel Air comes to mind. We might not get the best performance, but the value is in its originality. In order to get good results, picking the right platform is key. I'm still looking for a suitable platform for a level 3 conversion at a reasonable price, and I'll let you know when I come across one. Obviously, looking for something with the 5Y3, 6V6, and 12AX7 tube complement would be an easier time. The options are a lot wider, especially if you're after those unique sounds. As this series builds, I hope to document the circuits used for each build and make them available for you to use in your conversion. Stay tuned for these upcoming ant builds and let me know what future builds you have planned. Thanks for watching.